Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about my hiring process. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, if you had your own IT company, what would your hiring process look like? Well, that very much depends on at what stage this theoretical company would be in and what I need at that exact moment but I think that I can answer this question where we'll just pick a like the heart and soul of what I would think uh, or rather what I would like my hiring process to look like and I think it's a hiring process that would be very ideal if you could achieve it the problem is to actually do that so first and foremost we need We'll just do it together, right? Let's pre pretend that we're starting this IT company together, you and me. Well, the first thing we are going to need is some type of agreement on what we're looking for in the candidates that we are hiring. Because usually the way it works is that at smaller scale companies, you have one set of needs. It can vary, of course, but usually you're looking for generalists, people who are wide, the sort of people who can kind of do whatever and ideally know how to do it, do it fairly well so that they don't need a lot of supervision and can handle kind of all the different ad hoc requests that you might find. The gr bigger your company grows, the more you're going to invest in specialists because you, as you grow as a company, you invest, you, you get more and more people higher quality processes and your company starts slowing down and therefore when it's starting to slow down you're actually more inclined to invest in very high performance specialists uh, within whatever area they're in because you can't uh, optimize for speed so you try to optimize for quality people and you can actually afford them at that point usually but when you're hiring them the first thing you need to think about is okay you're gonna have a flood depending on the company, of course. But let's just assume that you have a flood of people, different candidates who are looking for a job. Now, at the small scale, it doesn't really matter if it's small scale or big scale, big scale, it's going to be the same sort of thing. Because although there's a lot of need for developers, there's also a lot of people who are ill-equipped, let's say underqualified, to do a lot of the work that you might be looking for. Now, you do not want to waste a lot of time talking to these people. You want a quick and efficient way to screen these people out. So the first thing should be for us to define a simple computer science related or something similar. It doesn't have to be a, like a diehard algorithmic problem, but some simple form of code tests that you can very easily send out to a candidate, to an applicant, to the position that you are hiring for because you need some proof of whether or not this person is someone you should discuss with because you don't want to spend a lot of because remember we're trying to run a company here I you have I mean if it's me I have to be able to do a hundred things at the same time and I don't have a lot of time on my hands so unless I'm gonna pay for some recruit or some other person to do this for me I have to budget that time so I have to be sure that if I'm gonna look at somebody's CV that they at the very least know how to code if that makes sense. So that's the first thing and that's this I mean you can do it however you want. Uh, the easiest thing is for, of course to just send them the code test and just say, tell them that yeah uh, here's the code test uh, please send it back within a certain amount of time or something something like that and then they can kind of do what they want. Now when we're doing this of course we formulate some type of code test that is not Googleable or Stack Overflow searchable. I mean, they can, of course, post the thing on a Stack Overflow question or something like that and get the answer, but we just want something to start screening out some of the people who are not, applic not applicable. Once they have passed that step, so they we are certain that they know at least basic coding, then we go to the personal interview, and then we have a discussion, we talk, we try to get to know this person, we try to look at their CV and like get a, get a feel for what type of person is this and then of course we try to match after a personal discussion and looking over the CV and so forth this person towards the needs that we have within the company and that's where it gets really interesting because now we really have to ask ourselves are we the people who should be making this decision because that is one of the biggest honestly this is what I argue the 
biggest mistake a lot of companies make when they're hiring people, and this is where it starts to kind of go downhill, is when you, as the person who's doing the hiring, you are not actually all that aware of the daily grind. The work that the team that you're hiring for, if we're talking big companies now, this is like the one of the biggest challenges that bigger companies have when it comes to hiring. If you are in HR, you're someone higher up or whatever, if you are hiring for a software team, you have to be damn sure that you know what you're looking for. Because if you're hiring the wrong person and there's a mismatch in personality and skills or things like that, that's going to actually slow down more things than just that individual. It's actually going to cause you a lot of problems. Now, in my, in our fictive little company, I mean, if we're a small company or something like that, then I would feel very comfortable making this decision because I know what I need. But this moment when I don't know, I should move the decision and like, who am I looking for? Like that judgment call to someone I trust who actually knows that, which should ideally be the team itself, like the people in the team or their team manager or like their team leader or whatever, their tech lead or something like that. But that's, that's, the, that's the next thing. Personal interview, get to know each other a little bit. And then after that, depending on what I'm hiring for, if I'm hiring a DevOps engineer, I'm hiring a backend, frontend, full stack, doesn't really matter what it is, right? I have prepared a challenge, a co-test, a slightly different co-test from the first one that is geared towards sh testing the things that are relevant for working in my company. In other words, if I am looking for a front-end developer, I will give the front-end developer a test that is relevant to the front-end position. So that's going to test you on CSS, JavaScript, etc, etc, etc. And the back-end developer would have a different test. The DevOps engineer would have a different test, etc, etc. And then we would give that challenge to the individual. Now, either they do it at home or depending on like what we're looking for here. We could do it on prem as well, but if it's possible to do it on prem, that would be ideal because it's very nice to kind of combine that sort of test with the personal discussions and so forth. But we can do it remotely as well. The important part is that they get a test that verifies that they actually have skills within the area of the whatever role that we're looking for, right? And then lastly, we have an, a, a final follow-up meeting where we basically just discuss how it went. You, if the test comes back and we know that, okay, they've passed the test, we look at the test, we go through it together and we just talk about it. We reflect on, okay, I see that you did you did this and you did that. Could you tell me a little bit by why did you make that choice and that choice and uh, how, do you, how did you think about that? To let the person who wrote the code speak on behalf of the code that they wrote. To learn, to understand their thought process, to not just assume that we understand what they were going through. Because this is one of those important parts where you really get to know the person's value system and the way they think. Because even though they, let's say for the sake of argument, that they fail the test. Well, depending on how much they failed by, in my, in my, from my perspective, well, that might be completely fine. It may just have come down to that they misunderstood the question because I formulated it in a poor way or something like that. Or if they completely nailed it and they were really good at it, well, if they then start talking about their code in a manner that makes me feel like, oh, this person might actually be a problem, uh, that's a different type of learning. So that's the, that's the soft part that should, at least from my perspective, follow the the code test that is relevant to the job that I'm looking for. And then when we've had that discussion, we will tell them we'll get back in touch with you uh, with a f like a, a f an offer or something like that. And then that's the end of the story. And then they start working ideally for, for the company. So what I want you to take away from this is that in my fictive com uh, IT company, there would be about four steps. Uh, I think that's that's enough to determine aptitude and so forth. First step is a initial simple basic coding challenge of some sort. It can be a simple algorithm or something like that, that you can very like kind of just broad stroke onto people who are applying to your position because you need to remember that you can't get intimate with every single candidate even though you might want to. So you have to figure out do they know even basic coding? That's number one. Number two is look at their CV, get to know them, have a dialogue, a phone call, a Skype meeting, something like that. Just talk to them a little bit and get the vibe. And if you like the vibe that you're getting from that person, 
then they get a code challenge that is irrelevant for the role that you are hiring for. If you are underqualified or ill-equipped to, to, to state that this is the stuff that is really important for the job that we are hiring for, you should not do this. If you are that person, you should be the one who's doing it. Otherwise, you should move it to somebody else. And then they get that code challenge, something that is relevant to the stuff that they're supposed to be doing. We get it back and then finally we have a talk and we just reflect on, okay, why did you think that way? Why did you do it that way, etc., etc. So they get to explain like why they made the choices that, that they made. And then that's the whole story. This should not take more, the, like this should be a fairly short process on for the average company. Uh, and it should screen out uh, most of the candidates that we actually want. So we, we would be, I feel fairly confident this has worked historically for me in other companies extremely well. Have a great day.